okay so now that uh, we have uh, now that we know like you know, how in pega how can we create a new application then after that like after creating a new application how can we design a case type then after designing the case type you know how can we you know um after that what are the i mean what are the fields are related to and what ui that we have to display for all the things like you know uh, we have we know that we have to create property sections flow action and flow so like that so once we have done everything so then we if we run the case then our uh, uh, ui will look like this and then also we have seen that like you know how can we make fields as mandatory so that uh, if we feel that mandatory, then we cannot allow user to continue unless and until the user enters all the mandatory fields. Like for example, for a, um, for a sample basis, we have just uh, um, uh, make a, like first name, date of birth, and phone number as mandatory. So now user will not be able to continue unless and until he'll enter all these details, like that. Okay. So and then of course we have seen that inheritance too like uh, so how that you know uh, pega finds the rules with the help of inheritance like uh, for example i mean uh, if we uh, if if any rule is reusable so we can just create it in the higher layer so that we don't have to create those rules again and again for example uh, let's say these properties we have created in the higher layer so now in the account opening also if we have to create a section so we don't have to create this date of birth email address first name last name phone number these properties because it's already present in the higher layer and it's already there in that inheritance path in that particular class okay so like that and and then the, after that basically like you know so if you see that like you know whatever the rules that we create for example let's say you know i have to create uh, uh, one more property here so now we know that okay, there are rules which we divide into, you know, which we pay guys divided into different different categories. For example, let's say data model category uh, properties comes under data model category, and then the flow flow actions comes under process category. Then you know, in certain category, the classes comes in, and the user interface category we have a section. Okay, so now in the similar way, if I do right click create, and let's say if I'll try to create a new property like that okay so now uh so here you can see that i mean we are like the wherever whatever the forms or oh, sorry whatever the rules that you create for example if you try to create a property or let's say if i'll try to create a, a section and then uh if i let's try to create a flow action okay so you know like that so you can see that like the pega will show one screen like this so the create form screen where that you have to enter the rule name like what a rule name uh, or what is basically basically the purpose of what that you're creating this rule and then uh, after that the pega will ask you like okay which class basically that you want to create this rule so if you want you can edit it here as well so let's say i don't want to create it in loan process class i want to create it in the last class like the you no know, boa class so in that also like you know, you can do that and then the next thing which you see here is the rule set again the rule set is very ma mandatory stuff so in this rule sets basically the pega will ask you okay which rule set that you want to create that rule okay so now for example let's say if i'll open any any pro property let's say okay so now you can see that this property approve project present inside this class boa dash leave uh, uh like uh, uh leave f1 dash work dash leave process this is a class name and the rule set name is this loan application one colon o one o one o one or zero one zero one zero one like that okay so this is what the rule sets so this rule sets basically is useful when we have when we do the deployment basically so now now like you know because this is like in the real time we um so uh, so in, 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 in real time, look, I mean, we have different environments, right? Dev environment, then UAT uh, or QA or then SIT, you know, and then the production environment. So, and so normally as a, how we deploy that, like, you know, with the help of this rule set. So uh, the rule set basically is, say it's kind of a bucket, right? I mean, where you store all the items and then, you know, you, you, you just take, take, or, or like in a bag, basically, like, you know, you just put all your clothes and everything or all your items in, you know, into that bag and just take that bag, you know, from one place to another place like that. So in the similar way, this is what the uh, rule set does. So now if you see here, so now if I'll open this rule set, 
So this is a rule set. So now you can see here inside this rule set, uh, and in each rule set we have a version 01, 01, 01, and inside this rule set version we have 64 rules. Now if I, if I'll open this one, if you click on the 64 rules, just that one, so you can see here these many rules are present inside those um, uh, rule set version. So uh, in that in, in that like you know most of the rules Pega will uh, Pega will create that you know when you create a uh, uh, create the application. So Pega creates few of the rules and few of the rules we have created. For example, the sections like uh, loan details, loan, you know, uh, then the personal uh, uh, personal details and all those things. So like that. So this 01, 01, 01, how we divided into, uh, divided is like, uh, so this one, like, you know, so this 01, uh, 01, like, you know, like that, 01 dash 01 dash 01. So this is how the rule set version looks like. So this one, the first one, the first one, this version is called as major. Okay. And then uh, and then the second one is called as minor. And then the third one is called as patch. So this is how basically like you know it's uh, divided, like you know, major, minor, patch, like you know, this one over one, one. So we have one rule set, like you know, one rule set will be there, like this. Okay, and then uh, for this rule set, we have versions like you know, we create versions like 01 dash 01 dash 01, and then like you know, and then we, now that you know, this 01 first one is called as a major, second one is called as a minor, and third one is called as a patch. So now, what happens is, let's say now if we have to do the deployments, then what we do is we just lock this rule set version. I mean, here you can see that this version will lock it, and then we create another version for let's say let's say we are doing sprint development. You know, then we can just say that okay, so this is what our sprint one. Okay, and then we can just change the description, and then once our sprint is done, or like you know whatever your release is done, so you know, uh, so in that case, what we do is we just lock and save. Okay, just we lock this rule set version and then we create a new rule set version like this. You can see here, we create a new rule set version as like 01, 01, 02. Like that. And if you want, then uh, you know, if, if you want to skip few rule set version, that also you can do that. Let's say I, I want to create five, you know, uh, 01, 01, 05, you know, so that few of the rule releases like a you know, few few version like 02, 02, 02, uh, 02 like 02. 02, 03, 04, like I, I just want to save it for let's say a queue release, like you know, if there is bugs, fixes, and all those things. So that is also is possible. So that is what it's versions and rule sets and versions. So now there are two things. One that you have to choose a class in which class basically that you know you you have to create a uh, uh create your rules that depends how you are i mean uh, class it depends basically for the reusability like you know i mean whether their room is reusable or not and all the stuff that you create it in the proper class and then you choose a proper rule sets too like you know because this is what a kind of a bucket like you know whatever the rules that you're creating it you're putting it inside the rule set version so that is something so that that's the reason like you know whenever you create a new new rule so the for example, it could be a section, full action, flow, case type, or anything. The Pega will ask you two things. One, and okay, in which class that you want to create that rule, and what is the rule set version? So now it's only one, because we have only one rule set version. And then um, we have a different types of rule set. So now you can see here, a loan application INT. So we have INT, right? We have some integrations, API related stuff. So if you want to develop some API, like, you know, for example, you want to connect Pega application to another application and all these things. So in that case, you can select this rule set, uh, INT1, you know, like that. So for now, like, you know, we'll work on this only. So, and then uh, like this one, so, and then let's say that the release is done and all these things. So what we do is like next version, we create it as 01, 01, 02, like that. You know? And then this still, this goes still like till it reaches to 01 dash, 01 dash, 99 okay and dash 99 so now once the patch version reaches to 99 then what we do is the next version will be 01 dash 02 but then we increase the minor version like you know 01 like this so this is how the next version will be like you know so now first we increase the patch version till it reaches to 99 and then once it reaches to 99, then we don't exceed to 100, 101, and all these things. We go only till 99. And then once that we reaches to 99, then we create another version, which is, you know, and we just increase the minor version. So now again, this will go like this, you know, 01 dash, 02 dash, 02, 
and then it will again like you know go till one uh, one dash ninety nine dash ninety nine. So this will go like this. So once it reaches both my major and uh, uh, minor, sorry, a patch and uh, uh, minor, you know, both reaches to ninety nine, then we increase a patch. Uh, sorry, major version like you know o two dash o one dash o one like this so this is how like you know we just increase our root sets versions like you know from 10101 so now this is our initial release initial development so now of course we do the development in 10101 like you know where that major is also over minor is also over and patch is also over and then after this this release like you know and then as a best practice what we do is like you know whenever you create a new rule sets uh, sorry uh, versions basically so we don't create a new, I mean, of course we can create a new rule set, but mostly like, you know, we create a versions, different, different versions. So now we give a proper description so that after, after three or four months, if you want to see that, okay, so I know uh, this version, like, you know, I've done it in, done it for which trend or which release and all these things. So that basically like, you know, you can be able to get that. So as a best practice, you know, just put the description uh, for that version. And let's say next version also you're creating. Let's just put the description like, you know, this is for, uh, let's say, uh, if there is a bug fix that you have done. So let's say like, you know, bug uh, 001, something like that, you know, so so that, you know, I'll get to know that in future or you or your team members can get to know that, okay, this version is for, you know, bugs fixes or, you know, bug 001 and all these things or issues or whatever, like that or defect. So like in that, you know, so this is what, you know, uh, is like rule sets. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, root sets and uh, classes basically. You know, this is how you divide. So that is the reason. So like, whenever you create, so now, now from now on, was like, you know, whenever we we will be creating a uh, uh, new rule, so you will see two things. Uh, like, you know, Pega will ask us right in you know, which class and which uh, rule set and version. So this is called as a rule set, and this is a version. Oh one, oh one, oh one, like that. And then how we divide those versions? We divide those versions into three. Uh, uh, three ways like you know one the first one is called as a major and second one is a minor and third one is called as a patch okay so yeah so any any questions on this or any confusion uh, Pankish, uh, like uh, whether we can edit uh, while creating any type of for example uh, while creating property or or uh, any uh, uh, section or any uh, anything, right? Like there, you can uh, go and uh, change your change your rule set. Whether we can create it uh, on the go or like we have some other screen, we should do there only. Uh, when you whenever you create an application, uh, then the Pega itself create uh, two rule sets for you, like this. Then if you want, like let's say uh, your lead has decided, okay, like you know, we need few more rule sets, like you know, which the Pega doesn't didn't create, then you can create that too. So, like what you have to do is you can just go to the uh records okay, and then or else, like you know, instead of not going to the records, then you can go to that any sys admin category. So you just drag it and then say go to sys admin. So in the sys admin category, basically you can find uh, uh rule sets. So somewhere here you see that okay so let me just go here and then okay uh, so my screen is getting okay so uh, like you know so let's say from here itself so now from here itself like you know if you just open it up and then you can just say click create then, you know, from here, you can just create a new rule set. For example, let's say you want to create another rule set for, you know, a few other features or something, you know, or like that. Then you can create that too. Let's say sample, I'm just creating it. And then 010101, and then just say create. That is a new rule set. Uh, this new rule set has been created. And of course, the first version has been also created. And, but after this, like, you know, uh, so uh, after this, like another change that we have to do is like, uh, so we have to go to this application rule. Mm -hmm. So just go here, like, you know, from the application, just open it up. And then here you have to specify that rule set, basically, like, you know, yeah, just, just enter. So here that you can see that application rule set. So that means this is, these are the four rule sets, basically the Pega has itself created. Like, for example, if anything related to organization level, so you have to just save that rule inside this rule sets. And INT means anything related to APIs. You know, so like, like that. 
So like that. Then after this, you can just add it and then whatever the rule set that you have created just now, you know, uh, sample and all this stuff. So you can just, you know, add it over here. That's it. So these are the two things. Basically, you know, you have to do that. So now I didn't save it, you know, because I don't want to create unnecessary rule sets now. So, but this is the way, basically, you can create a new rule set. Uh, new but mostly, okay. the lead will decide, basically, if it's needed, not needed, and all this stuff. Yes, because I've uh, because we haven't created a separate application, right? I mean, I've just added okay. this, the same application only. I've added this a case type account opening. So whenever whatever we do it for account opening, like you know, it will directly like you know we have to choose any one of these, any any, any one of these rules. But in the real time, like what we do is like you know if it's account opening and all these things, we just we, we have a separate application for all these things. Like you know, leave application will have a separate application, but the only one thing will remain the same is this BOA BOA. That's it. The, the, those these two rule sets will remain the same, but these upper one, like this application specific rule set, will be different there. Okay. That's it. So here I've just added okay. this uh, sample case type so that I just wanted to show you like you know in inheritance path or the reusability path. And that is the reason. BOE means like you know, let's say for example, I have created under this BOE and like you know, this BOE rule sets. So now what will happen is let's say I've created it as a sample one. Okay, now let's say uh, here uh, like that. So now what will happen is now this rule flow action uh, basically like you know you can use it anywhere like you know anywhere means like you know uh, for example let's say uh let's say for example i have four applications uh, okay one is let's say loan application uh, uh, uh loan application then we have uh, um account opening app application then we have uh, the leave application uh then you know uh, we have let's say transport application where the employee can uh, avail for a transport and all these things four applications so now for four of these, like, you know, we have, a, we'll have a separate application and all those things. But for four of these, like, you know, one, uh, there will be few things, a few rules, basically, like, you know, which will be similar, right? For example, let's say uh, the Bank of America logo will remain the same or else, uh, or else like few properties like name, uh, first name, last name will remain the same. For example, first name, last name. So uh, for every process, mm -hmm. like, for example, let's say I'm applying for a leave, then I have to enter my first name, last name. I have to apply for a transport. I have to enter first name, last name. Like that. So for all all these four basically properties, so all these four uh, two properties, let's say, that will save it on the topmost layer, which is the bank organization layer, like you know BOE. And that, or for example, it's flow action. If we have done that, if we saved it, so now what will happen is whatever be the application, so we don't have to create this flow action again and again. For example, this flow action is for canceling the process. The canceling the process, let's say I am applying for a loan and then I want to cancel this process because uh, so suddenly I realize oh, I don't need a loan. Our account opening, you know, uh, every process, if each and this, like, you know, we need a flow action, which is called, which will cancel the process. So that and that that reusable process, we can we can configure it in the higher layer so that you know, we don't have to configure. Again, the section should also be present inside the BOE layer. For example, now if I try to, let's say, you know, uh, uh, try to create, let's say, uh, uh, okay, again, a sample. And then if I try to create this in a new class and let's say BOA dash, you uh, know, uh, loan process class. Okay, right now I am saving it. Then the Pega will throw the error saying that no, I mean, you can't do that. Why? Because okay. it is present inside the BOA class and the Pega is not able to do that. But say similar way, let's say, for example, uh, if there is a flow action present inside this class, Okay, and the, but if you, you know, and the section present inside the higher class, parent class, then you can do that. I mean, vice versa, that, you know, that, that can happen. Exactly. The ESS, it, 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 it is applicable for any room, like, you know, property section of okay. uh, and flows, basically, you know, uh, like that. So any room which we, which you think can be reused, I don't know, or which you can think that, you know, it can be reused. For example, the logo, let's say every company, any portal that you log in, like, you know, the, we have a portal that this is a Pega logo. So, so for all okay. these, uh, uh, for all these uh, four application, one logo will remain the same. So that also we can save it in the organization layer, like you know that rules it. 
so that if yeah, even great. if I open a transport zone, so I should be able to see the Bank of America logo. Of course, the logo will not change, right? I mean, uh, whatever. So yeah, so let's continue. Okay, so now this is what like, you know, we have it, uh, classes, rule sets, and the different rules that, you know, how we define it, you know, with the help of uh, inheritance. So now inheritance, basically like, you know, we have two types. One is, uh, one is like, you know, a uh, uh, pattern. And the another one is directed. So now Pega, how the Pega is able to find it? Like, you know, just now I've shown you the example, right? The Pega, so if the Pega is not able to find the root, then the Pega will immediately throw an error saying that, you know, not able to find the root. So now the first, whatever, what happens is now, like, you know, the first is that the, as soon as like, you know, or if, if you run the process, if, if you run the process like this, then the Pega is able to find the proper rules, right? Or like, you know, if you are, uh, or if you're creating any rule, uh, then also like, you know, then that has to be present inside the proper hierarchy. So what will happen is, uh, so the first rule, let's say like now here, like, you know, the Pega, like now that I'm running a process of this class, right, loan process class, and this section is a personal uh, detail section. So the first, the Pega will try to search the section inside the this class only, because this is a process of this class, loan process class. So if the Pega is not able to find the section, then the Pega will go to the parent class, like you know, BOA dash uh, L, uh, no, uh, uh, the dash loan uh, loan application dash uh, uh, work, and then it will go to the next parent class, so that you can see here uh, if you inheritance part if I'll show you. So next next class, the Pega will take this class, and then Pega is not able to find that particular section. Then the Pega will see okay, like you know, let's go to this class. Then uh, again, the Pega is not able to find a section. Then the Pega will take this this path, like you know, this is the last one, like you know, that pattern uh, class is the last one, that BOA. Then the Pega is not able to find the section two. Then the Pega will again come back the main class, like you know, this loan process class. Then the Pega will take the directed path. The Pega will see okay, this class has which like you know, so this has like you know, it's directed from which. Okay, so this here, here we can see that. So this is the directed class again, like you know, so mostly we give the directed class as a uh, work dash cover dash. So mostly like, you know, whenever the, you go to any Pega project, so mostly it will be your, this class basically like, you know, what we do, do is we just save that. So now like the Pega will go to this class the, because the pattern path, the Pega is not able to find the rule. So the first class, and, and you can see that in the class here it is, we are saying that whenever uh, I'm, we are, we are giving order to the Pega saying that whenever you have to find the rule, and you first find it through the pattern and then go to the directed one. Okay, so now the, then the Pega, like, you know, if I'll save it and now if I'll sh show this inheritance path, so now you can see that. So now this inheritance has been changed. So now the this next class, the Pega will go here. Like, you know, after this, the Pega will jump to, Pega will say, okay, what is the directed class for this class? It's work dash cover dash. So Pega will come here and then work dash cover dash. Again, the Pega will try to uh, find, you know, a rule. Again, the Pega, after this, Pega will again take a, pattern path, which is work dash cover dash. And then again, like, you know, if you open the work dash cover dash and work dash, okay, like this. And then after this, the Pega will take like, you know, what is the direct class? Is it the that one or like, you know, like that. So basically like, you know, and then it will go to the last class till at the rate base class. So this is the topmost class we have at the topmost class that we have is, is that the rate base class. So basically, this is how the Pega finds the roots, like, you know, with the help of pattern and directed inheritance. So first, the Pega takes a pattern path. Pattern path is very simple. Like, you know, you can see that next, next class. Like, for example, here, the leaf process in this leaf process is not there. And then here, the work is not there. And here, the leaf application is not there. That does it simple, like, you know, one step, one, one step, basically. That is a pattern path. But directed path, it could be, you know, any, any class that you can give as per your requirement. You can give any class as a directed class for this class, like, you know, for the loan process. So now we have given work dash cover dash. Then the Pega will take this class and the Pega will try to find the rule. It could be any rule. I mean, just, I'm just giving example of a section rule, but it could be any rule. And for, for any rule, basically, Pega try to do the same thing. It, and then after that, the Pega is not able to find that rule in any one of these one to seven classes. Then the Pega will throw the error, like the error that I have shown you, right? The Pega will say that, you know, I'm not able to find that particular rule uh in that hierarchy and all that stuff so like that so this is what it happens so this is how the pega actually tried to search the rule in 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 pega 
you know, so with the help of this pattern and narrative. And this one is basically like, you know, it's optional, like, you know, you can choose basically like uh, whether you want pattern uh, path or not, you know, like that. And this is mandatory, like, you know, it will always be there. I mean, even if you, if you for the a directed one, you don't have option to choose. The pattern one, you have option. For example, just now I've shown you, right? So for this class, you can just choose whether that, you know, I mean, check checkbox, you can uncheck or check this one, then whether to choose whether, you know, you want this uh, pattern one or not, um, basically. So I mean, like that, you know, so this is how your um, inheritance works, basically. So I've, I've also done, all, I mean, uploaded a document uh, in that drive you know, so for how pattern directed works. So maybe, you know, you can just go through that, you know, it will be clear. So if, if you have any questions, you know, just come to me. So in any questions, by the way, like, you know, it's hard to difficult, uh, hard to understand basically, like, you know, to you know one session, but uh, yeah. the Pega will see, okay, what is the pattern path for a work dash cover dash? It's actually a work dash class. Then the Pega will take, okay, okay. what is the, what is the pattern class uh, and what is like, you know, next to it that uh, work dash cover dash. And then Pega will say, okay, it's, it's uh, I mean, until like, you know, it's only like, you know, work dash. Then the Pega again come back to see like, okay, what is the like, you know, the directed path of it. So till till it reaches to this at the rate base class, uh, we have, let's say now, now that, you know, we have to display like, you know, so now that we know how we have, how we, how, uh, like, you know, whatever the fields that we have to display for that, uh, we have to, uh, uh, you know, uh, what are the fields that we have to display? Like, you know, we have to display, we have to create a properties, right? We have created properties, like, you know, that these properties. But now we have to display, say, in a, in a, in a personal, you know, uh, we have to display the address section also. Like, you know, so here the address. Now let's say, you know, uh, so what we can do is we can, so one, you know, uh, here, Okay, and any rule, uh, and any rule that you want to delete it. So what you can do is you just click on that, and let's say if you if this is a rule that you know it's no longer needed. So what you can do is you hear on the top of that you can see that delete. So just click on the delete, and then it will ask you for a reason, basically why, why that you want to delete it. So just give a proper reason. So you know, uh, it's like you know not needed like that. So created for uh, some test case and all the same. You can just do that. So just delete that. So it will get removed or de delete from that. Uh, delete it from the system. And again, with the Pega will give you the restore option. For example, let's say by mistake you have deleted it and you want to restore it. Then if you again click on this restore button, the Pega will restore it back. You know, so this is the, uh, some options that you have it. So, and here, so now what we can do is like, you know, here or, uh, we can give two options to the user. One that we can ask user to enter the address, full address like this, like, you know, then the text area. Uh, then, you know, uh, let's say we create the property as address. Like, like that. Okay. And then uh, uh, I'll submit this. Save this section. So now what will happen is next time, you know, I'm applying for a loan, then I can enter my address saying that, okay, it's like, you know, I mean, uh, my flat number is this, my registration, I mean, or uh, like, you know, my, uh, uh, like you know, city is this, and the uh, uh, like you know, India pin code and all those things. Either I can do, either I can have one option. I um, mean, one option is like this. Another option is, uh, I can create two uh, two properties. One is like you know, our address is the main property, and then inside that I can create one sub properties. Sub properties means like you know, in address what we show, like we show house number, like the only user has to enter house number. Then another another sub property that we can create is. Uh, um uh, or like you know city uh, let's say street street name and then uh, uh then here is city then we have country uh, state okay and then uh, we have uh, landmark okay and then we have let's say pin code so these are the properties like, you know, so we can create something like this. So, you know, so of course this looks good, right? I mean, I mean we'll, we'll have a clear idea where, you know, what user has entered, what house number that user has entered, what street the user has entered, what city, what state, instead of figuring it out, figuring out from here. So we can easily like, you know, we can create properties like address 
and then we can create sub properties uh, like you know sub properties like what properties that we enter it like this in the similar way we can have many other details too for example let's say uh, we can have one property also as uh, um, uh, like you know let's say you know uh, 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 past loan details for example let's say you know i have already have a loan but i have to enter the details again if I have any loan, for example, let's say I'm applying for a home loan, but I have, I have already have, you know, a uh, personal loan on me. So that also details, let's say like, you know, a user can enter. So one property, we can have it like this. And then we can have some properties like, you know, okay, the loan, uh, what loan type that you have it. And then, you know, uh, then what uh, uh, and how, how much is the amount that you have it. And then how much EMI that you are paying for that uh, amount. And then, okay, in which year that, you know, you have taken it. Year of, you know, uh, year of loan. And then uh, in which, uh, uh, um, or like, you know, um, what else that we can have, okay, uh, like that. So, okay, so if uh, loan type, amount, EMI, okay. Uh, okay, and tenure, let's say like, you know, for how many years that you have taken it up, okay. So uh, like that, so this, this is how like, you know, we can divide it. All right, I mean, this looks good. So now we'll see that, you know, how, so till now we see that, okay, so if you have to create any single value properties, single value properties means like, you know, it can store only, like, for example, uh, like first name. So I cannot enter first name. I mean, the first name will store only one, one, one uh, value as a first name only. Like, you know, of course, we'll not enter the last name, middle name and everything over there or phone number on all these things. So it will only contain my uh, first name. That's it. In the, uh, the, the, that is that is why these properties are called as a single value property. That is like you know it will store only really one data, one single data. But whereas these are called like you know address, like you know these are called embedded properties, embedded properties, or some say is complex properties. You know, uh, so don't get confused like you know like that. So they mean the same thing, like that. You know, I again uh, we. Re you know, because embedded means like, you know, because we, we, this property basically like, you know, I mean, this address basically it will not store like only one data. It's stored like, you know, house number, stores, city, sorry, uh, street name, city, and all these things. Uh, similar to that, like, you know, our this uh, past loan details also stored, like, you know, a 10 year year of loan, like, you know, I mean, when the year loan has been taken, what, how much is the EMI, how much is the amount, like, you know, and then the loan type, basically, what loan that, you know, uh, you have taken it like that so that is so now we'll see that you know how we can design it so that is the reason like you know in the previously like and you know, i have not added the address field so that because today like you know we'll, we'll see this too like you know how we can design that and and tomorrow session also we'll discuss on uh, this only okay so now uh again so now how can what how can we create embedded properties so we'll just go there so now this property is not needed. So just, and whenever like, you know, you have anything like, you know, in your system, let's say you're developing any code or something like that. So whenever you have, or you feel that if few code is not needed, you know, just remove it off from the system because you know, that will also improve the performance. So just remove it off, you know, uh, like that. So I'll just, I'll just save that. Okay, and then, uh, okay, so now, uh, so now that we know that, you know, properties comes under data model category. So now address, so now we feel that address is also common property. So now let's create our address also on the higher layer, like, you know, the parent class. So now in the data model categories, just do a right click and then create and then the property and then uh, just give a name as address. Okay, or let's say I'll give a temporary address. Okay, so now, uh, okay, the class name is looks good, and the rule set name, uh, rule set is also good, like over and over and over. This version is for the recent release. So let's say, let's imagine that you know we are doing the I mean, uh, this Sprint One development only. So we'll just keep that Sprint One uh, version. So we'll just say create and open <clears throat> like that. So now single value properties like you know so now if, if i have to store everything in here so now I, i'll just keep this text only but now i have to create embedded properties right so now what you can do is in the property type just change it change the property type to so now these are the I know, single value properties can have date date value date time decimal double and integer password text you know true false 
encrypted text and all these things. But whereas like, you know, you have another column which is called as a page, you know, which is actually called as your embedded properties. So in Pega, like, you know, you can create three types of embedded properties, single page, page group, and a page list. So we'll just see that, you know, today and tomorrow, we'll only focus on these types of properties. Like, you know, we'll see the difference between uh, these three, like, you know, when to create and all this stuff. And then you just, if you go there advanced, so you can see some Java related properties, which we hardly use it in any project. And I mean, like, you know, so uh, like, uh, I have worked on like you know, eight, seven to eight projects, but I have not seen these properties where they have used it, nor my seniors or my, you know, anyone like, you know, have used these properties in any, any one of their projects. So of course, the has given the option. So we'll not, be, we'll not discuss this Java related properties because we'll not be using it basically. So, and, 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 and Pega, like, you know, and Pega, like, uh, uh, as a best practice, the Pega always recommend you to use Pega's, like, you know, uh, some functionality where that, you know, you don't code. For example, let's say, you know, you're writing Java code inside the Pega, I mean, which you can do with that. And you can write HTML code also. For example, let's say uh, in the section, I mean, you are very expert in JavaScript, HTML, and all those things. So what you can simply do is you can open it up and you can see the HTML tab, uh, tab right? So you can go there. And then if you just uncheck this auto-generated HTML, you can write your HTML, you know, code here. But now this is not a best practice, basically, like, because whenever Pega says that, you know, no code, I mean, if you're coding it, if, because Pega has been designed for the user where are the developers, basically, where you don't have to code, basically, right? So if you code it, then you're breaking the law of Pega, like, you know, it's breaking the rules of Pega, basically, those are called guard rules. So in the end of the sessions, like, you know, I mean, uh, uh, during the sessions, I'll also let you know the best practices, you know, which you have to follow, you know, when you are doing uh, any Pega development. So, so this meeting basically will end anytime soon. So we'll just join it back again. Okay, so till the time, I'll just go. So again, I'll just do this one. Okay, I'll just delete this. Okay, so now let's come back to the property now. So now, uh, so okay, so this is the one. So this one, like, you know, you can just try it out, like, you know, by your own. So already we have discussed this date, date, time, uh, double decimal. So now uh, we will have single page, page group, and a page list. So now it depends upon your requirement. Now the, the client will tell you or the requirement is that, you know, the user can enter only one address. Right, I mean, because this is a temporary address, so user will not be able to enter. I mean, user is related to only one details, basically. So in that case, what you can do is you can go with the single page. So just create a single page, click on it. And then the Pega will ask you page definition. So page definition means that, you know, whenever you create any uh, embedded properties, the Pega will ask you for a data class. You know, here also we have to create one class basically. Okay. So here you can see that this is work means this is a work class and it's something, this is a data, right? I mean, where, you know, we have to store these data, right? House number and all these things for that. Basically we'll just create one data class. The Pega will ask you to create one data class. So simply, uh, uh, and, and again, this class pattern basically, you know, depends how your current organization uh, has. So now let's say like, you know, let's say our organization has, let's say BOA dash data dash, and this, this will remain the same. And then after that, like uh, for which property or for what reason, like, you know, you want to create this data class just here. So this, I want to create it for address. So just create this class. Okay. And then create and open. So now this is what this abstract, the Pega will ask you two things. One that this class type is abstract or a concrete type. So now abstract means like, you know, whether do you want to create instances of this classes or not? For example, let's say, this class is just to like, you know, I don't want to create instances of these classes. You know, I, this is just to, you know, store these properties like house number, street, and all these things. So I'll just make it as a, a abstract. But whereas if you want to create instances of these classes, then you have to select concrete. Okay, for example, uh, your uh, this this class loan process class. So what if I, I have not already told you, right? I mean, this Pega is built on Java, and Java is what is the objected uh, or, or object oriented programming. So where we have classes and in objects or instances, basically. So, so if you if you just click on this class, so you can see that you know we have created these many instances. Instances are nothing but like the whatever that the cases that we are running, right? So those are all become the instances of this class. So that is the reason if you open this class, so this admin and all this stuff. 
So this is what it's a, it's a concrete class. Why? Because we are creating uh, instances or objects of these classes. But, and then that is what you have to decide whether that, you know, this, uh, this data class will, will not be creating any instances. So it will be abstract class. So, and this class version we give. So don't confuse between rule set version and the class version. So this is not a rule set version. This is your, you know, class version, basically like, you know, like that. So, and then, uh, and, and then if you try to save this, the pay will throw an error. Okay. And the error is that description is and usage is missing. So basically whenever you try to create a class, so to here in the history tab, basically like, you know, uh, uh, to two things is mandatory. One is a description and a usage. So of course, for the any for every rule, you'll see that two, two tabs. I mean, this tab, history tab. As as a best practice, basically, why, why I mean, we just fill this uh, fill this history tab so that we'll get to know like you know why have we created this section, so that in your team member wants to use this section so that you know he'll just go to the history tab and he can just get to know okay like you know uh, and also like you know who has created it so now of course it's showing my name because i have created it so like that so now who has updated it who has created it so that let's say someone has uh updated your rule so you, simply what you can do is you can just go to the history tab and you can just find it out like you know who has updated it and when they have updated it for example it's here this section we have created it on february 7th and updated it on so february 8th like that. So this is how you can just get to know that. And I hear the description and the usage that you can give them. Of course, for other rules, the, it's not mandatory to fill this. But for the class rule, it's always a mandatory that you know you have to fill this description and usage. You know, so I just get some, you know, address class, address class. So I'll just save this. Okay, that's it. So now I've saved the class, and then I'll save this property too. So like that. So this is how your embedded property looks like for a single page. So again, I know it's like that. And then I'll just refresh this app explorer. And then if I'll go here and then the properties, and then you can see here, single value properties are like this. And whereas it's embedded property, then the Pega has added one arrow here. Yeah, right. So now if we click here and if we try to expand that, so nothing is nothing is coming because we haven't yet created these properties. So now this property we have created it like you know, let's say temporary address, this address, this property we have created. So now we have to create these properties. So right, house number and all this stuff. So this properties will be created under this data class, not under this work class or something like this. Because this this uh, this is what this data class we have we have stored to store this data. All right. So that is what, you know, uh, we have it. So now next, uh, what I'll do is I'll just create a new class. So first I'll copy this class and then I'll create a new property. And then the property name is house number. Okay. And just make sure that, it, uh, you know, whenever you're creating a new rule, anything like that, just make sure that, you know, you're creating it in a nice, uh, right rule set version and right uh, uh class because uh it, in, in real time it might can happen that you know uh your other team members are working in some other rule sets and you are working in some other rule set so just spend some time to just check like you know just to see like you know you're creating in a right class and a right rule set version okay so everything looks good here so now I'll just create and open it and save it that's it and then again I'll, I'm creating a new class in this class and all so it's a street name Okay, and the street name is a text only. The user will enter the text only. So save it and then create, a, a, let's say, city. Uh, state. Again, if you want to get to give uh, give some options like state means and all these things, you can just give that like Karnataka, Maharashtra, uh, Telangana, Andhra and all this stuff. And then uh, after that, like, you know, uh, let's say landmark. And the final property, which we can add is, uh, I'm I'm giving everything as a text text text, but it depends, like, you know, you can just change it. Uh, uh, the last property is as well, pin code. And you can see here everything I've created in this data class. So create an open, I'll save it. So now I'll just close all the tabs. And now what I'll do is I'll just refresh this app explorer. Now, again, if I'll open that property, 
you can see here. So now, now if I try to expand this one, so you can see here like this. So this is how your embedded property looks like. So now these are data of both email address, first name, last name, phone number, all these are single value properties. Like, you know, you won't be, you can't able to expand it, but whereas temporary address is your, uh, is, is, is your, you know, uh, embedded property where, you know, you have a, uh, other like you know sub properties like uh, in under the temporary pages this is your main property where you create your uh, it, uh, select the type as a single page single page why we have selected it because the user will enter only one address you know it, it's not in uh, user like you know it's not our as per the requirement we have to show a screen, screen where the user has to enter only one address and then the uh, for every embedded property you have to define a page definition i mean page definition is nothing but a data class that we normally we give and inside this data class we just specify all these properties whatever the properties that we want to display basically okay so now what we'll do is we'll just go to our section the main section okay the, let's say personal details inside the personal details let's say if you want to show the address so what we do is we'll just go and i'll just put one a layout here and then i'll just make it to inline grid double because i want to show two uh fields in a row okay that's it and now i'll drag the properties similar way i'm the same way basically and then i'll just go here and then now uh, embedded properties right so now first i want to show this temporary address and then dot uh, house number that's it so it, here like you know the embedded properties will refer it like this temporary address dot house number okay to two one and then in the similar way i'll just go here and drag it here and then uh same thing temporary address dot uh and then whatever like you know depends on your yeah, this truth name so it's city and then so i'm adding these properties again and again so that you know it will just be like you know uh, you can be able to get it like you know what basically i'm doing it so it's the temporary like you know page name dot uh, uh city let's say straight and then finally two properties that will add it so back here temporary address dot our uh, landmark and finally other properties pin code That's it, pin code. Okay, done. And then this this personal details also, I just make it to a line grid double so that you know it would be uh, uh, you know just to increase like you know collapsible screen and all the stuff.